It's almost as bad as doing the Shen Zeno. Actually, Zeno Gears is also pretty bad too. <laughs> doing that grinding session in Zeno Gears was pretty awful. I wish that, like, these games had better gameplay. I'm not gonna... Like, I'm a little bit... It's a little disappointing that it's so standard for RPGs. And I wish that, like... I mean, even in... Uh, actually, I actually haven't played the new one, so I really should say, but... In uh, Shenzhen... Uh, even Shenzhen 6... Which I have seen little previews of. It looks okay. Like, graphically, it just looks okay. It's like, the 2D designs are really, really good. But, like... And the gameplay looks okay. And that's... Why are we selling... You would think that... Like, China has access... Everyone, all the game designers have access to all the material from both Japan and China. And, like, you would think that we would be able to, like... We kind of like have a martial arts series where we have good game, like an interesting battle system because there's so much potential and it's just a shame that we have to settle for this and I'm just like, I know the Chinese public is okay, like we're all okay and we're like, yeah, in Wuxia, the story is like the main focus and not the gameplay, but it's like, why sell for less? Why do we have this, why do we have to have bad, like okay gameplay and good story? Why can't we have both? That's what the greatest RPGs become. I mean, short of Shenzhen 1. Shenzhen 1 is like, if you ask someone in China or Taipei who was born in the... Probably in the early... Not born in the 2000s, for instance. Then you'd be... They'd be like, I know that game. It was... It's a classic. And shorts... And like, people are like, the story is so good. But I mean, I guess that's the most important part of it. Like, that's the what people remember the most about it. Not the part where you beat up a bunch of dudes. And like slowly. So I mean that's all cool and all, but I'm just like, like that's one thing about Shenzhen One. Like that's the one that like started the whole thing, and that's what that's the one that everyone remembers. Like seriously, it's 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 pretty nuts. How much of an impact it had. Anyway, we're gonna fight these guys too. I hope one day like something like sometimes I'm like oh okay I got hit sometimes I'm like maybe I should just like because I'm like I'm a programmer myself so I see these things and I'm like maybe one day like I should seriously consider like maybe making I don't know like doing a wuxia game as an indie indie project and yet have it have good graphics and good animation. The hard part is making the story, but I mean, maybe there's some, there's gotta be someone in this who can make good wuxia. So, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, wuxia is the word for martial arts warrior, and it's a whole genre of things. I've, I've used that term a lot here in, um, in this stream, and hopefully it's not too confusing, but it means uh, martial arts warrior. So it's all about these kind of people, just kind of running around and... The story is the most important? I don't know. I don't know if I completely agree with that. Otherwise, Mario, no one would ever play Mario games. You, I don't know. The problem is like, you can have a really great story, but if it takes 80 hours to grind to get through one dungeon, then it's like, you can't... Uh, you're never you could have shakes the words of Shakespeare and it could take 80 hours to that's the thing like I always say like you can have a poorly designed game and like the story is okay and the story is really really good but you have to play eight, 60 hours to get to it just to get it and it's just like uh, so bad I, at that point you might as well have just made it a movie so you could save the player the trouble of having to go through it because honestly, like, if you want good stories in Wuxia, there's plenty that are not in the game, either. Like, I like, I mean, Jing Yong is like the progenitor of like the 
I mean, he's one of the people that popularized the helped to popularize the genre. I mean, okay, fine. So this this stuff has existed for a while. Like these kind of stories, it's just like like Jin Yong is just one of the authors that people remember. That's more modern to us. It's a still a huge influence. Uh, okay, I'll just use the regular. I'm gonna swat him away. And like, the thing is, like, there are games that don't really have much story, and it's they're great games. So I don't think we can have make it so that if you want a, st a good story, then you might as well not even do a game. A lot of good stories are better are far probably better. You're probably better off watching it in a show form. I mean, half the fun of this is like, of course, like you can make the argument that half the fun is playing and being the character and making the choices, and that's actually pretty cool. Like, one thing about this game is like, at least you can make choices to kind of influence relationships, and that's really cool. I really like that part of it, the morality choices, really. No, you really don't get, <laughs> you don't get much of that. Okay, the twenty-two is the my. That move is powerful enough to destroy them now. But yeah, we should not sell. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys can sell. Like the Chinese, like we can sell for less, but we shouldn't have to. Is really what I want to emphasize. It's sort of like you can ask for more. It's, it's, it's not mutually exclusive to have. A, like, here's the thing. Like, Xenoblade has really. Oops. Speaking of, uh, I always felt that, like, one thing Xenoblade has is that it has a unique... Like, Xenoblade on the Wii. Not, I'm not talking about Xenoblade X. I haven't played it enough. I feel like I still need to play it some more. Oh yeah, of course. This Shenzhen takes tons of inspiration from Jin Yong. I mean, the thing is, like, I haven't read any one of his novels. I just know... Like bits and pieces. I it's not even bits and pieces, let's be honest. I'm actually like until I played start playing Shenzhen games on stream, I was actually very, very skeptical about Wuxia in general. Cause I had a lot of bad experience like there was a lot of shows I watched and I was not very impressed. I was like it it got really silly. Like stuff like Xiao Shi Yilan, which is like well, fun to watch and entertaining, but not good. <laughs> I would never recommend it to anyone. Oh, the Yiyang. So, so the, oh yeah, yeah. The, is that that's the one with the scars? I can't remember what move that is actually. Yeah, and doing side quests. I feel like as long as those are done well, those are okay. like I'm okay with like the run. I like the explorate. The exploration part is fine. I would like. I'm fine with that stuff. Like for Shenzhen, it's okay. It's just more like I've seen it done better elsewhere and with like comparable games and I'm like I think we can definitely do better than that. I don't know I'm just a guy that I come from a culture like I live in a place where we're supposed to innovate and make things amazing Oh, it's that one. Yes, that one's a pretty fun. That was a good technique I come from a place where like We are always striving to improve things and so when I see this stuff, I'm I'm not okay, guys. Like remember, it's not personal. Like I want to make sure that everyone who's watching the stream understands that like it's never personal. Like I'm not saying that. Like I I kick sacred cows all the time. So like it's not because you're a bad person for liking something or not. Oh by the way, Jing Ten, you got caught in the. That's kind of annoying actually. One thing about this game is that I wish the controls were better. Oops. I work down the vine. This is one of those other things where I wish I had better control so I could just right climb back up the vine once you climb down it. Oh, Jing Tian, you are truly an idiot. But anyway, like I like I feel like if you stream like like the game would be better if you did stream like half this stuff and like if the controls were better if it looked better like it really does make a difference I mean of course like 
Uh, yeah. I mean, you could have a really terrible story and still have good gameplay, and it would probably be an okay game. But I suppose that's true. I feel like it's kind of like a marriage, right? You need kind of need both. Right, I understand. That's the appeal of it, too. I just think we can do better. It's really my, like, I'm not say like, I do have a lot of things to say about... I'm actually going to save a lot of that for more for the when I get to the review, so that way I can have a fully more informed. I do like, like, at least with this game in particular, you had a lot of morality choices, and not you had really had to think about it. I, it's kind of like, in, it's more like Xenoblade X in a smaller scale. Okay, I, I know I keep bringing that up. I'm sorry guys, I, I, I'm really enjoying Xenoblade X as well. And that's the other game that I would have played around this time, but... Yeah, it, it like a lot of like there are a lot of really like it's sort of like there's a set of games that are like gamey games and then there's something called interactive fiction. Like it's actually really interesting because like interactive fiction is stuff like you don't really need like a tremendous amount of skill to play, but like you can do a lot of cool like it, you have you get a lot of choices. You get to pick your choices and see like what happens if you decided to go down the river instead of going into the cave and stuff like that it's actually really interesting how like the genre involved in terms of that stuff for shenzhen it's not too not as much applicable to shenzhen one or two for that matter they're very linked. they're all pretty much less just going one direction <laughs> you really can't do much to change how the story goes Okay, level 69, one more level, yay! Yeah, there's those are, I always thought those kind of choose your own adventure books were really interesting. I'm gonna save while I have it. Um, I'm pretty much, I think I can get this level like within 10 minutes, but like it's actually really interesting about how like, also just by the way guys, this is also one way I'm keeping awake is because I'm actually thinking now. I'm thinking about genres and industries and all that stuff. And I also want to make sure, like, hopefully you guys aren't too offended by, like, stuff I say. I'm, I'm, like, I think we need to remember, it's, criticism is a separate thing from, like, hating. Hating is, like, when you say, like, this game sucks, or why is, why do I care about Chinese culture or so in a game or whatever. Like, you can be a terrible person and hate the game for, hate games for no good reason. But, like, it's, like... With criticism, we just kind of like, it's sort of like you just see what worked and what didn't, and then you like, hmm, what can we improve on next time? I actually would think like, I actually think like wondering like how like with Wuxia in general, like where would you find someone who can write? Yeah, you have to go to China probably. Oh! Like, I'm actually thinking like if I were to do a Wuxia game, like what I, how, what kind of people I would have to recruit? Obviously, I'm not going to be the writer. Heck no. <laughs> I am not going to be the writer. I do not know how to write good fiction for this kind of stuff. But it'd be really cool to like really introduce like one thing like if I were to make a game like this, I would aim to like make it like of course, I feel like in this point like the Chinese version has to be the supreme one of it's like the original script and then we would but we would also translate it to English so that the western can appreciate it. I know that's I, I call them Westerners. I know that's a very Chinese way of saying this kind of stuff, but okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run you all over with my sword and my explosions. It is a little bit janky looking, but whatever, it gets the job done. Anyway, you can't do anything to me because I'm too strong. Uh, I can. Okay, no, that's that's not gonna do. I should just use a wind move. But anyway, like, it'd be really like, uh, cause I know people who can animate, and I know people who can draw, and like having worked in this the game industry, oh, excuse me, I can definitely find people to help. Oh, why does it hit harder there? I don't get it, but damage is weird, man. Well, like, it'd be really cool to do it. Oh, okay. I don't know. I guess you're still on the other statement I made earlier. 
Because I was just talking about, like, what would I do to make a Wuxia game? Okay, get out of here. Get out! I guess it also depends on the type of game you want, too. I was also thinking, like... Anyway, let me kill these guys. It's not a big deal. Oh, I, I, I should just use the other move to run them over. It's hard to hear because you're playing a game at the moment. Oh. Well, okay. What am I going to do about that? Uh, let me see. I'm just gonna stare at the stone giant for a while. Oh. Doo -doo, let's run them all over. It's so funny that the damage happens before he drops the bomb. That's kind of silly, but. Tornado kicks up dust. Should take care of both of them. All three of them, really. Oh, it's just a bit more. This is dreadful. But yeah, it, it'd be interesting, because I was always wondering what kind of game... Like, if I were to do an independent game, what kind of game would I do? And like... And I feel like this would be a one that's pretty challenging. And it's also in a genre that's not very well known outside of China. And it's a darn shame too, because like... The... There are a lot of games that are... Chinese games that of this kind of... In this genre, Wuxia, that are very interesting. And like, really, not everyone is looking for... Like, even think... Even turn-based games are like, kind of like... There's not actually that many anymore. Like, I know a lot, there's a lot, for Japan at least. That's a, that's a bit, the West, it's never really been a thing, but like Western RPGs don't really, aren't really turn-based, so to speak. They are still have an element of life, of being, happening at the here and now. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and punish you guys for attempting to defeat me. should be there's another game I wanted to show off it's called later on probably not before Kudelka because I don't think it will be out by then I there was Dex as well which I wanted to show which is from uh, the Czech Republic oh hi but I'm not gonna be able to show that until it comes out probably not to another not for another few months the Shin Megami Tensei times Fire Emblem but I mean that's not out yet either I can kill the stone giants in one hit now. Not sure why, Smack. Huh. How come I only doing 25s now? Huh. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this this grinding service, this grinding is actually really not good. It's sort of forced grinding, it's kinda of, uh, I hate Forced grinding. I know some people really do are fine with grinding. I think it's, everyone's tolerance is higher or lower. Like for me, I can do it, but it's still like, oh. it's so. Ugh. But yeah, Aryan is the one that's the most interesting to me because it comes from Nigeria. It is not from Japan, it is not from China, it is not from the U Europe or US or North America. It's from Nigeria, of all places. Because like there is sort of like they're starting a game industry there. This is one of the first games to come from Nigeria. So you'll be seeing 
legends from uh, African mythology or Nigerian mythology or the tribes around Nigeria in it so actual people who are different from the ones we have here it'll be a lot of fun too because that's the culture I don't really know all that much about like as like I know I'm like oh I'm very international I've been to I've been to many continents and countries like Except I haven't really been, because I've never been to South America or um, Africa for that matter. And I've always wanted to understand more about, like, those places, too. Oh, uh, well. Anyway, at least I got the item off of that thing. But Aryan Legacy of the Koryoda might be something that I could play after Kudelka, I have a feeling. Because I have a feeling it'll be out by the time Kudelka is out. Caught by the time I'm more finished with Kudelka. Kudelka itself is also pretty interesting. It's a Japanese-made game, but it takes place in Europe. And it's going to have an element of horror on it, but it's, I don't think it's going to be too... I, hopefully you, the chat will be able to handle it. Oh, hi. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Maybe it's kind of like a... I wonder if it'll be more of like an Eve vibe, Eve vibe, but I think it's still mostly an RPG, so it should be very interesting. The voice acting is a little hokey, but I think we'll ha it'll ha it has its charm, I suppose. Anyway, how close am I to that level? 8,000. Oh, wow, I'm really close to that level, actually. Oh wow, I am really close to that level 70. At least the grinding curve, the leveling curve is still reasonable, but it's been about, what, 52 minutes? Oh jeez. Ugh, jeez, it took about an hour. Well, at least an hour to grind six levels is not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's a lot faster than Xenogears, that's for sure. I'm sorry, I keep kicking Xenogears. I feel really bad. I know that a lot of people loved it. I, I just can't get over some of those like bad parts of it. I have to keep talking about it. I don't know why. It's just like I can't let it go. I just can't let it go, guys. Anyway, we're gonna keep surfing and dropping the bomb. Scotty, drop the bomb. Anyway, this is pretty much going to end the leveling. I'm going to move them, to move Jinken to. Uh, oh, I didn't kill all of them. Yeah, I'm just gonna use my super technique to kill everything. No, no music for you, but I did get a level to level 70. Yes, the goal has been accomplished. Yay! Oh my gosh. After so many hours of like a total of one hour, I finally done it. But I need now need to make my way back to the third floor. So I have the items to heal myself from in that. So I'll be okay where I am. Yes, it's very nice. We can actually stop grinding for now. I guess at worst, if it doesn't work, we can always grind again, but hopefully not. We should, maybe we can strategize our way through this. I'll be continuing buffling myself and using all the pearls. But Chongro, the, the, the final boss, is going to be pretty tough. He's a tough customer, man. He's, he don't take, he's not going to take it easy on me. Anyway, I can kill these guys. I probably could have used the other technique. Whatever. Pretty excited. Oh my gosh, final boss tomorrow. It's gonna be pretty crazy. I know, I'm level 70 now. So we can, I think we can stop grinding for time. 
Oh, let's play Xenoblade X now. No, no, not this time. I, I need to get ready for bed soon. I was actually, this was about when I wanted to call it quits. And you saw me yawning earlier. That was not fun. I am pretty excited. I, I don't know why. I'm more excited to play Nigerian games than Chinese games now. What is wrong with me? No, I'm just joking, guy. I actually want to show Xuanyuan's, uh, Xuanyuan's sword, which is called uh, Sword of the Yellow Emperor, at some point in time. The first game isn't too long, and it might be a good one to show. But I'm probably what I'm doing is pre-playing it, and then maybe I'll translate it. But I have to figure out when it will fit my schedule. Oh, streaming schedule. The pro the struggle of being like the struggle of being unable to stream full time. And otherwise, I stream full time. I could finish this game like I would have finished this game long ago, and a lot of games a lot faster. Unfortunately, life calls, and I I'm. I also have to pursue my other passion, which is to make video games. <laughs> so, alright, I think this is a good stopping point, guys. We're gonna fight Chong Lo, the final boss, tomorrow with this idiot here. Yeah, he's an idiot. Hey, guys, seriously. But anyway, so... So it'll be fun to see the final boss. I'm probably gonna... Okay. Hopefully I can do it tomorrow. I'm probably gonna write a little announcement on my channel and Facebook. And Facebook as well so that you guys know that... Or you guys or basically the people who are not here at the present time can concentrate and can find out that this game is coming to an end. Maybe they'll enjoy the final boss. The ending was probably going to be pretty crazy, just like it's been for the past two games for Shenzhen 1 and 2. So, yeah, hopefully anyone who's still up at this time, including Illusion Queen, you all can tune in at the appropriate time. I'm going to try to start a little earlier, but we'll see if I'm delayed. If it's going to be too late, I'm also not going to do it. I think I will move it to another time. But anyway, um, well, thank you all for watching, Illusion Queen, and anybody else who was, was on, wasn't was able to chat but was watching and lurking. So, as always, I bid you all a one an, which means good night, and Jin Tian Jian, which means see you today, and or Deng Dai Hui Jian, which means see you in a, in a bit, and Xie Xie Shou Kan, which means thank you for watching. So anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed my little grinding stream, my little rant and talking about stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed the talk show, and I will talk. To, will actually talk more about the game later today. Take care. Good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Also, grinding's boring, but at least six levels in an hour is not bad. Good night.